Grace Beyond with the Beyond Grace Show, and I'm here today to do a little story time with you to tell you guys one of many of my testimonies. Um, and it was confirmed because the pastor that visited our church today spoke about the woman with the issue of blood. And so today I'm going to tell you my testimony. Um, it's similar to her testimony, but today I'm going to share with you something that I've only shared maybe once or twice on social media. Um, but today I'm opening up. It's a sensitive top topic, but I am opening up for you to guys today. So make sure you stay tuned um, to hear my testimony. And I'm hoping that somebody will be inspired. Maybe you're going through this as a woman. Um, and you'll be able to gain hope through this video. So keep watching. Make sure you subscribe. And um, let's just get into it. Okay, you guys, so in 09, I um, took very, very, very sick. Um, I had my own woman with the issue of blood situation. In 08, I didn't have a period for a long, long time. I may have had like one or two periods in 2008 and men if this is too much information for you i'm so sorry just like the video and move on to my diy uh build your own chic mirror for 12 bucks <laughs> but in 08 i may have had one or two periods i did not have um too many periods so in 09 of january i finally had a period and I was used to having long periods and irregular periods so I was expecting it to be at least two to three weeks maybe even a month okay I was fine with that to bleed um, but when it surpassed one month um, that's when I got concerned and it actually went on to two months of me bleeding the last week of the two months of me having a period um i just couldn't take it no more i was i felt like sick i felt like crap i felt fatigue um i was a sophomore in college so i needed to move around um as much as possible to get to classes to work out to go to work um so it was very 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 hard for me to do anything um, I will never forget my friend Joy Servillian, her and her sister, we were all close at the time and Joy said, Grace, let's go to the nurse, let's go to the nurse and she walked me to the nurse. We had a, we had to maybe stop maybe three or four times um, before we actually got to the nurse because um, enough blood was not pumping to all my vital organs, especially my heart, for me to breathe properly. So we had to stop maybe three or four times um, on campus just to try to get to the nurse. Um, and once I got to the nurse and checked in and everything, gave my ID number, which is L2012110. Don't ask me how I remember that. It's just an easy number to remember. Uh, but the nurse, I remember Dr. Martha, Dr. Martha, I do believe, Dr. Martha at Lamar University, um, she looked at my pupils and immediately she said, you need to go to the hospital. My pupils were gray. My pupils were gray. She literally did not see any red in my pupils. Um, and as you all know, you have some type of red in your eyes. And all she said, your pupils are gray and you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Would you like for me to call you an ambulance? And I said, no, no, no. I'll get my play brother, Dwayne, at the time. Thank you so much, Dwayne. I love you. Um, and he'll take me to the hospital and make sure I get there okay and everything like that. So Dwayne came and got me. We loaded up. I remember what type of car he had. He had an Explorer at the time. A black explorer um and we loaded up and um i was able to pack me a little overnight bag because i just had a feeling i would be at the hospital overnight um and joy was still there helping and everything like that 
And so um, he took me to St. Elizabeth's and we got checked in and everything. And as you all know, when you go to the hospital, if you've ever been to the hospital before, they'll ask you on a scale of one to 10, what is your pain level like or, like, or how do you feel? And I immediately said 10, like, I felt like crap. Um, and so they got me in and everything, processed everything, and um, they called me in quickly to run tests and do everything um, to see what was going on with me. So they ran this specific test. It tells you how much counts of blood that you actually have in your body. And so they did that test and immediately after I came back to sit in the waiting area after I took that test, they pulled me into a room, an emergency room room. And then once they got the results from that specific test, they admitted me. And then my mom, my brother, my sister, my nephew, they made it to Beaumont and um, they were very um, compassionate and cared and you know, they came um, to see if I was all right and there's a set of families for her. Um, so Janine and Jacob had to leave. Janine and Jacob and Jerry had to leave and mama stayed with me while I got admitted into the hospital at an actual room. And Dr. Pertinell, I do believe his name was, nice looking man, nice looking doctor. Um, he came in after they got the results and everything and he was like, I don't see how you are sitting here alive. He said, you have 3.1 counts of blood in your body and you're supposed to have 40 counts. I don't see how you are alive. Um, if you could have nicked yourself shaving, he said you could have nicked yourself shaving in the shower and you could have bled to death and fainted. And he said, this is a true miracle. And my mom, I can only remember my mom just praising God and thanking God for sparing my life and you know, just thanking Jesus for just making a way um, out of no way I was pacing I was trying to get here trying to get there and I felt myself dying I felt like I was literally dying and I literally was dying so basically um, they gave me Provera they which gave me Provera and I was to take it for 10 days Provera is a hormone that helps you stop bleeding um, also they gave me a blood transfusion overnight, and I just thank God that my mom was there with me overnight. She was able to make the night a little smoother and a little calmer, and it's something about mama that uh, that makes you calm down um, in bad situations, but thank God for her being there. Um, I say all of this to say this, and I hope this inspires somebody and encourages somebody to do this the woman with the issue of blood she had an issue for 12 years i want you to i want you guys to read on this story too it's mark 5 um 25 through 34 i do believe but the woman with the issue of blood she had the issue for 12 years and in those 12 years she went to everybody spent her money spent her time she went to everybody else to figure out the issue and to heal her. But tell me why on the 12th, the 12th year, she went and she saw Jesus and he healed her body. I say that to say this, and the pastor that was at the church, he said something so profound. He said, if we would just take our problems to Jesus and the Lord first, he might not fix it right then. And sometimes he will instantaneously. Sometimes he will fix the issue then. But if we would just take our problems to God. The Bible says take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. If we would take our issues to God first. Not our friends. Not our family. And show not our enemies. We would just be a better world. This would just be a better world. A better place. And we'll have a better life. I do believe. But I say this to say this, infertility is real, facial hair is real, cystic acne is real, irregular periods, real. You need 
to treat it. If you have elongated periods, you need to go to the doctor. Um, you don't want this to happen to you. It's an ongoing issue, but right now it's under control. And the syndrome is called PCOS. Yes, PCOS. Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. Ladies, majority of women have this and they don't even know it. But if you are skipping periods three, four, five months or more, Nine times out of ten, you have polycystic ovarian syndrome. What is that, Grace? I'm glad you asked. It is a insulin-resistant syndrome that causes infertility. Okay? A insulin-resistant syndrome that causes infertility. Go to www.pcos.org to gain and obtain more information about this syndrome it's okay you'll live but you have to manage it all right but it is real and i hope i inspired someone to look more into this all right especially in african-american women all right this has been my story time and i'm sticking to it this is my story and i'm sticking to it and I cannot believe I did not cry. Because usually I cry when I say, when I tell people my testimony and when I tell people this story. But I'm so glad that you guys tuned in and um, stayed in it with me. And um, until next time, y'all take care and have a blessed day. Oh, and I will post a video more uh, with more information about PCOS. All right. So y'all have a blessed day. Take care. Love you, love you, love you. Spread love, give love, like, comment, share, love. Have a good day. Thank you for joining my story time today. Make sure you subscribe, like, and love.